All right, it says we are live. Hello, Gun Nation. How's everyone doing this evening? We're going to have uh, Link's Defense, Michael from Link's Defense, and Harry's Holster. He was on just a second ago. He's just trying to fix his mic, and he'll be right back on. Um, how are you doing this evening, sir? I'm good. How about yourself? Good. Doing well. There's Mr. Harry. Whoop, oh, nope. He's gone again. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to get the chat pulled up. Yeah, just mute it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, sorry, everyone. We're having a little technical difficulties, but we will get it squared away. But how are you doing this evening, sir? I'm good. I'm good. We are busy as always. Yeah, that's a good thing, man. That's a good thing. Yeah, we're going to talk about some uh, business and how everybody's cranking and not cranking and whatever's going on and talk about what's going on in the gun world. And, you know, of course, we got the uh, presidential election coming up and the looting and everything else. So we'll kind of give it uh, once around on every everything. So uh, while we are waiting, yeah, Big Al, sorry if that you're hearing a uh, an echo. We're trying to get it all squared away. Yeah, I'm echoing. I'm going to have to fix it. Okay. Is my mic too hot, too loud maybe? Is that what's going on with it? Let me try to turn it down and uh, we'll get this squared away. All right, you back, sir? Yes, yeah, how are you guys? Good, how are you? You still hearing the feedback? feedback? Yeah, I'm yeah, still I'm getting the echo. I don't know about everybody, everybody else. else. Hopefully it gets squared away. But uh, how are you doing this evening, Harry? Oh, pretty, oh, good, pretty, good, pretty good. 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 All right. Let me do a quick roll call. Y'all can keep checking your mics. We'll kind of give it a once over. Let me go way up to the top. So we got a bunch of people on here, which is always a good thing. Y'all can smash that thumbs up. To to turn yours down. That's why we're not going. Mine is? Yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to turn yeah. your, your volume, volume down. down. Yeah, I did. Is that better? Let's see. Hello, hello? It's still a little bit, but it's better. better. Yeah. yeah. I'll turn it down even more. We'll go way down. How about that? All right. Hopefully this works better. But um, we'll give it a quick roll call and... These guys can check their mics while I'm babbling on everybody. But, uh, let's see, first we got Ranger. Now let me move down. We got uh, Dubai, Mike, Micah, Kathleen, uh, Dennis B, Big Al, Frank, Guy Comet, Romans, Sam, Pistol Pete, Art, Scott. Uh, let's see here. All right, CZ Shadow, Armsman, Bald and Curious. Harry said, or uh, Bald and Curious saying, put your headset on, that'll solve it. Harrison's got. Yeah, yeah he's, got got the ear, he's got the earpiece in. All right, uh, let's see here. I will try something real quick, and we'll see if this might. I'm going to put it on. Uh, Stereo, and we'll see if that helps. I don't know if this is going to be any better, but uh, we'll try that. Y'all can tell me if you think it's any better. Test one, two. Hello, 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 hello. Feedback, Feedback still. still. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's our it's audio right. hitting your mic. Damn. All right, because I know I have good internet, but who knows? All right. <laughs> You're not wearing any kind of headset or earphones, are you, Mike? Nope. No, what's, no, what's happening, happening is when you're hearing us, and that's, that's reverting, reverting back, back through, through the, the, uh, the microphone. Okay. Hmm. It's the first time that's happened. That's weird. I mean, is it bad? Uh, it's up to them. I can deal with it, but... I can. I mean, I can hear it. Bueller, Bueller. Here, mute um, yourself real quick, Mike, and then we'll see if Michael or I, we can still hear it. All right. What about now. Yeah, I'm not yeah. getting any feedback. <laughs> yeah, it's fixed it's, now. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let me see if so, I can dig out some headphones. 
First yeah, time you listen to shit years. Whenever you're not talking, you can mute it on your end, but that's kind of a pain. Yeah. It's a lot. It's not as loud as it was, though. Yeah. yeah. Tell Bald and Curious to stop blaming me. I was trying to blame somebody else. else. I'll never forget whatever yeah, shot show that was. I don't remember what year. 2018, probably. Because whenever we went to the uh, Farms Policy Coalition event. Yeah, I ended up being a buck. There's a ton of people there, though. Yeah. Yeah. I actually did meet a couple of really good people there now that you say that, so. The event just wasn't what I was expecting, though. Did they do anything last year? Uh, they this do. Year? They, that party happens every year, the Leatherneck thing. Oh, yeah. And Firearms Policy Coalition just kind of tagged on to that. Oh, I got you. All right, how was that? Any better? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can don't you hear, hear anything. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Everything's yep, good. We can hear you. All right. Okay. Golly. Well, it's the first time I've had to do that in forever. But, uh, all right. So, hopefully, we'll get this cranking. Uh, let's see here. All right. Uh, what I want to talk about and have these gentlemen on is talk about business, politics, you know, what they're seeing in their business, um, what they're predicting on 2021, you know, Got some questions here to ask about them. Uh, first question for everyone is, are y'all tired of hearing about COVID? I'll let Harry start. Uh, yeah, I mean, I live in a pretty small town, so frankly, the whole COVID thing has kind of dissipated. The only place people wear masks is in the grocery store and the post office for some reason. Uh, so besides that, it's not really an issue where I live, but you go an hour away into the city and it's, it's just kind of crazy. I mean, you see people walking through a parking lot without a mask on a full sunny day and people will run away. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just tired of it being a scapegoat for everything. It seems like. The world's ending because of COVID, but yet 99% of the people that get it survive it. I'm not saying it doesn't suck, but so does cancer. <laughs> but There's no situation that doesn't have some sort of downsides. There's nothing you can do, whether it's designing a product, implementing a policy, anything like that, where you're not going to have some downsides. And the reality is some people are going to die from COVID. The point is we've gone past the point where we're saving people and gone to the point where we're causing a lot more harm in other areas. So we've been past that point for a long, long time as well. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. You know, I go into some different states and different counties and they have different rules. Uh, so some are, you know, six feet, but don't worry about masks. Some are mask, you know, and <clears throat> also the six feet. So it varies, but I am, I am so sick of, of hearing, you know, a lot of people's excuses in business, you know, oh, not, you know, can't do that right now because of COVID. I'm like, uh, okay. You know, it's just, it, it's just different. Um, I know this is probably going to be, you know, quote unquote, the new normal or there will become some normal out of this. But, um, and then I have some people where it's just shaking hands, bumping fist, you know, it's just like nothing's changed. So I guess it just depends on the areas. What's funny to me is I've had a couple of debates with people on the whole mask thing. And when they're debating me, we've usually just gone out to dinner. They didn't wear a mask the whole time we were at dinner, walking into the restaurant or any of that. And then we're hanging out within two feet, three feet of each other. And they're telling me how they think masks are a good thing and that people should be wearing. And the hypocrisy on this is just kind of insane. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some in the mask that they're suggesting we use aren't even effective. No. If everybody had some legit masks, maybe I could see that argument. But there's other arguments about your immune system, getting herd immunity, that sort of thing. No. Yeah, I mean, the masks that they're, you know, pushing are just dust masks. Um, you know, I've got some serious masks, you know, if people really, you know, like respirator masks, and I know you do yeah. too. 
Uh, so if people are really wanting to cut all of that out, you know, everybody would be walking around in hazmat suits and stuff like that. But, you know, like Keith has said, this is what's happening. People are afraid to die from COVID-19, so they stop living. You know, it's like they're they're fearful. They're just, you know, oh, I don't want to get this. I don't want to get that. And I have a big event coming up, um, and there's going to be a lot of people there. And, you know, we're going to try to do the six feet thing and stuff like that. But it's like you can't just go and hide and let life pass you by because you're worried about potentially getting something if you get it, you know. Hopefully there'll be medication and I'm not in any risk. You know, I don't have lung problems and heart conditions and diabetes and things like that, like other people might have. But if you have that, don't put yourself in those situations, but don't take, you know, healthy people and just shut their world down because I agree it's going to cause, it could cause alcoholism. It could cause, you know, drug addiction. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, suicide, things like that. It could all lead to bad things. (laughs) You can't just shut down the world like yeah, there's, we've like we've done before. There's no doubt about that, and I hate to see it's really become a whole political thing. You can pretty much guess the way somebody's going to vote based off their views on mass policy. And some people have changed their opinions. And this whole thing started. Michael didn't really take it seriously at all, and he was right from the beginning. I took it very seriously from the beginning, and then as soon as the data started changing, my opinion changed with the data. Mm-hmm. So, but not the rest of the country hasn't followed suit policy wise. I didn't, I didn't expect it to go this far. Um, Harrison called that right. Um, I didn't, I didn't think we would go to this extent. Uh, I was, I wasn't as concerned for business as he was. Probably should have been. Granted, we have grown more during COVID than any other period in our history. Um, part of that being we are obviously 100% made in the USA. Um, so that helps. Uh, but it, I don't think it helps the public and our customers at large or in general. So, yeah, I think the big control part of it is, you know, big government, you know, and of course somebody, I think they, somebody just said that. Yeah. Scott said that, but I was already thinking it, you know, the big government control kind of thing saying you will do this and you will do that. You know, that's the thing that I don't like. Um, or one of the main things, but, um, you know, if you are at risk, do not go in public, you know, don't put yourself in those situations. If you're not, you're probably, maybe you'll get a fever, maybe you'll get a cough, maybe you'll get some of these things. And, you know, I mean, look at the, look at the, uh, people who have gotten it, um, you know, and you're not in a health risk. It's like what, 99.3 or 5%, you know, I mean, it's like, come on now, come on. I, just, I think you're like 99% if you're an older, like over 60 or something like that. Your chances are still incredibly high of getting through it fine unless yeah. you have severe problems. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Scott, Scott P79 on here, he says it's the first time in history we've quarantined non-sick people. And before he, right before he posted that, I was thinking, you know, why do we, why are we healthy people? when we really are only supposed to quarantine sick people. What what good is yeah. quarantining healthy people other than destroying our economy and using this what I feel? I could be wrong. A political yeah. problem. No, I totally agree. And they're using it as a crutch, you know. Um, they're just like, oh, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that and stuff. It, it, it's just like, man, I, I'm just so sick of that word. I could, you know, 10 to 20 off. years from now when the politics have died down and the data – all comes in, they're going to look at this as the biggest farce yeah. that has ever occurred. Yeah, I agree. I do agree. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get off the COVID thing. I mean, like I said, I'm tired of hearing about it, and I know we're bringing it up again, but we'll go ahead and jump off of it real quick. But uh, one quick question. I didn't know if y'all had seen it. Had you, Have you seen, and I think it's pretty cool, have you seen the new Apex? Uh, it's for the FN509, the new 5-inch complete upper that they are doing in-house um it's actually pretty cool you can get it in stainless steel or you can get it in the black nitride um you can get the threaded barrel or non-threaded barrel it comes completely assembled cut for only from rmr no delta point pros or anything else so it should hit, hit the hollow sun the rmr the sro um 
and it's basically just ready to go and you slide it right on. Um, you know, I think that's pretty cool. It doesn't have the FN cut, you know, so you can fit multiple optics, but uh, it comes with suppressor sights, blacked out, or you can get the excess suppressor sights, so there's different options. But all of that is uh, $600 MSRP. Wow. So, yeah, and that's stainless or uh, black nitrided. So, and that includes the barrel. I mean, and it's the it's not just an average barrel. It's actually a uh, precision barrel. So and that also includes excess uh, F8 sights, correct? Yeah, it's the excess uh, suppressor night sights, or you can get the FN blacked out suppressor sights. So it's your your option. Um, but that's that's a pretty damn smoking deal. And if you've seen the cuts on it, it's pretty dang impressive. Um, and it's a five inch. Now on a dot gun, you don't have to have a long slide. But I think that would be cool. Oh, and just to let you know, the cool thing about this is it fits the full size FN509, and it also works on the mid size 509. Not the you know not yeah. the little not the not the slim, uh, the 503. But if you get the 509 mid, so you could have a really small grip, you know, for concealed carry, but you could have the long barrel. Um, and if you don't, it also includes a cover plate. So if you don't use the optic, it does have a cover plate that it comes with. So I think that's pretty damn cool. Uh, I would say it's probably, I, I'm not sold on it. And the main reason is because if FN would sell the frame separately, that'd make it a lot more interesting to me personally. The frame? I don't like the Take, yeah, I don't like the idea of taking one of my existing slides off just having it lying around. Yeah, well, I mean, just gives you the option, you know, like like Art's saying here, you know, he's saying uh, Big Johnson Guns of Gear kind of hard to justify $600 for a slide barrel uh, sights, but if you really go to spend it like the gun didn't have any of that cut, because I know I had all my stuff done, so I had to have, you know, I had to have it milled, then I had to have FN suppressor sights, then I had to have it re coated so, you know, and that didn't include a barrel, you know, or anything else. Uh, so, I mean, I think for if you added it all up, you're actually getting a pretty smoking deal. If you're you at 300 to $350 just between the sights and the uh, barrel itself. Yeah, and that's without any slide work. And like I said, you can get the stainless steel or the black. So you're getting a little different offering there. But I just think it's a cool option. Um, you know, for somebody, oh, and it also does come with all of the upgraded Apex, Apex kit in the slide. So, you know, you're getting all the goodies there and ready to go. Now, you're not getting a trigger because that's in your lower, but, um, you know, you're getting all the updated stuff, uh, your striker and all that stuff. Uh, so if you really add it all up, you're actually saving a ton of money doing it that way. Yeah. But. But just an option. I mean, it, you know, there's not a... I have some people who are FN fans and they really love them. I have some people who don't give two shits about them. So. so... So can I give Michael crap right now for just... Let it rip. up on me? Yeah. Do you see what's in the background of his... Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, and those are... Paintings. Oh, those are paintings. Remember, Harry? We're on Painting. YouTube. Those, those are paintings. Yeah, my Painting. painting with two... $200 tax stamps that he gets to babysit until the ATF decides I can have them. Yeah. He gets to touch it. And, regulating and, paintings. Yes. He gets to fondle your painting. It's my fault. Oh, art. Yeah. I was I admiring those before. Art and I'm more sophisticated now. I just. Yeah. It's my wall. He's a collector. <laughs> <laughs> I just use other people's money. Yeah, the smart, the smart art culture. Yes, yes. It's hey, always better if you collect other people's you, art. You can't find three hundred blackout subsonic, you know, projectiles right now. So uh, it's not like the thing's getting used. Who can't? Michael or me? <laughs> Big J's been sending them to me like every other day. <laughs> yeah, like five dollars a round or three dollars a round. No, no. I've, no, I've, I've got them. Around. They were dollar a round. I yes. yeah. But that they was for uh, they Super subs. Sonic, though. Yeah, like if yeah, you shoot, subs. we shot Supers through that and subs, and all I want is subs for that Big gun. Big difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. it makes yeah. Sense. I've got a little, I've got a little bit of a, 
I got a little bit of a sub collection, but uh, I shot it through mine too, and I was just like, holy crap, this thing is quiet. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. It actually, I'm not really startled by anything. I'm not startled, but, you know, impressed. And when I shot it, I mean, I was like, what the hell? You know, I could hear the casings hitting the ground, and I was like, wow, this is this is impressive. Yeah, so, all right, talk to me about talking about Q and these pistol brace stuff. So what do you guys think needs to happen with all this? I think the ATF needs to be abolished. They need to go away. Um, I think, you know, it's just another infringement and it's just another way to try to get $200 from every person out there. Um, and if, if I think also doing it right before the election was their whole plan. I know they've kind of led up to this, but uh, I think it's a joke. I mean, yeah, you can have my brace. I'm putting stocks on it. I mean, th this this shit's getting out of hand. I well, think, honestly... Also, go ahead. The latest is with the, uh, the trying to classify any pistol ARs as all of the weapons mm -hmm. and having you register them that way. I think that's where they're trying to get off and trying to make it reasonable because, correct me if I'm wrong, but all of the weapons, what's that? Five dollar registration. I don't know. I have my SOT. I don't. I don't know. But you know, I you know, that's which I don't. I don't do many all other weapons. It's either SBRs or suppressors. That's pretty much it. But uh, it's just it, this is a political stunt. Um, I, I I know Harrison thinks that this is them trying to make Trump look bad. I I don't no, see. No, I think any, yeah, I could see. I, I actually talk to somebody today i could see trump maybe doing it through the back ends to kind of push the guys who are mad about the bump stock ban to support them this time around because they know that he will be more lenient on this issue than biden would yeah i could I see, could see that, that being the case as well but i couldn't see somebody trying to think we're dumb enough to think that this is something that would help trump because i don't i mean there's plenty of bureaucrat leftovers from who knows how oh. long? I mean, what's the, and that's is who, the federal that's government, like 25 year retirement? Level. Yeah. So they could be, they could be from the Carter or the Clinton era. You know, you don't, who knows? <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Carter, 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 Carter. Carter. Yeah. yeah no shit. They're rolling around in some wheelchairs or they're six feet under one or the other. But I have a question for you. I get, I get asked this question all the time. And I want to get y'all's opinion. I don't even have it written down because I've got it memorized. Um, why would anyone want a 300 blackout over a 5.56? Depends on use, what you're going to do with it. Uh, the 300 blackout, if you're going to shoot a gun suppressed and you really want to be quiet, the 5.56, you can get subsonic 556 my understanding is those are a little bit finicky from a reliability standpoint and you're basically shooting a 22 long rifle with really an accurate ammo at that point whereas the 300 black out there are really good ballistic options and it's just fun to shoot man it is so quiet like that sounds like a quiet pellet gun doesn't it michael it does and your 10.5 22 inch suppress is nice. And, but the yeah, yeah the, the problem with the 5.56 supersonic is you still have the crack. You're still breaking the sound. Mm -hmm. So you're never going to get rid of that crack. But I'm with here. And I mean, I don't like 5.56 subs just don't make sense to me. But actually shooting a 22 is fun. <laughs> but I wouldn't. I mean, you might as well just buy 22s and shoot 22 long rifle through subs or through suppressors if you wanted to go that route. Yep, and I will agree with all of the things that you said. However, I'm going to throw this up. Okay, 5.56, five, even supersonic, okay, you know, when it's, we all know the size of the round, okay, the actual bullet. Um, and then you have 300 blackout supersonic, okay? We know that's a 30 cal round. What would be more devastating, and I'm, I'm just talking on supersonic, not subs, Supersonic, what would be more devastating out of the two rounds? Depends on the range you're talking about shooting, and it depends on the load you're shooting. There's some very effective 5.56 five, rounds. Yeah. But I'm talking, say, you know, 200 meters and in. 
Uh, again, it just kind of depends on the target. 300 blackout, in theory, has a little more. You're shooting a heavier bullet with less velocity. You're shooting a lighter bullet with more velocity with the 5.56. Five, it's, you know, if you're shooting something like a hog that has a lot of bone structure you've got to get through, shooting the 300 blackout, the slower bullet might be advantageous there as it's less likely to disintegrate and fall apart. But if you're shooting something like a human, 5.56 five, might be a little more advantageous. See, so I kind of look at it is distance. You know, with distance, of course, you with a 5.56, five, you're going to have more speed, lighter bullet, things like that. But, you know, if you're shooting, like, because where I've shot a ton of 5.56, five, I know a lot of people are, and if I, five, I, I say 5.56 five, five, or 2.23, two, and you can get different grain. And yes, some of that is devastating. But, you know, me personally, and y'all all know this, I'm a 308 guy or a 30 cal guy. I love 308, I love 30 cal. And, you know, I'm fairly newer to the 300 blackout. Um, you know, of course, shot 308 forever and still do. Um, if you really wanted to devastate something, yes, 300, 308. You know, I mean, it, it you know, certain distances, we know that. Um, but uh, I think out of the two, I'm starting to prefer 300 blackout more, even in a lighter grain bullet, you know, even supersonic. Um, you know, just personal opinion. Um, it's just 5.56 five, to me, because I've been shooting it probably more than people have been alive, maybe on the chat, because I'm old. But um, it kind of gets boring to me. You know, there's just not a lot to it. It does what it needs to do, um, but it's just kind of boring. You know, and of course, it's there's more of that out there than 300 blackout, and it's been around longer, and it's proven. But now, 300 blackout's pretty proven, too. Yeah, I just haven't really noticed a recoil difference between supersonics, uh, 5.56, five, and supersonic 300 blackout. And frankly, 5.56, five, in normal times at least, is a lot cheaper to shoot. Yeah. So, 300 blackout for me shines in subsonic, and then for supersonic, I really don't care i will say it's kind of nice to have a gun that you could potentially switch between subsonic and supersonics on the fly so yep. that's something that's a big plus i see with 300 blackout and that's what i was going to say too with varying your ammo um you know you can have a mag of this and a mag of that and also the cool thing is is you could throw a 300 blackout upper right on your 556 five, lower and you can't really do that with anything else so and you can use the same mags you know and if you go to subs some of those can be finicky but um with the proper mag you know i know lancer and i have them uh has the new uh 300 blackout mag and i know you have some too and i've tested them and they've ran great i haven't had any issues with them now i have not put i was going to do it just for shits and grins but i have not put supersonic ammo in the 300 blackout subsonic mags, the new mags, just to try it. I haven't done that. I was just going to do it to see if it would even function them. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I just I just think, you know, and if you really want to get into a total nut cutting, um, you could bring in 7.62 by 39 compared to 300 blackout. Yeah, what that's just a completely different conversation. And, Michael, you actually had a 300 blackout back before it was cool, right? Yeah, it was several years ago. It was like when the 300 blackout was going up, and uh, I guess everybody was getting into 300 blackout. Uh, I had a couple. Got rid of them all. And I honestly, See to that? this day, if it was just a straight up AR platform, I wouldn't get it. The only thing, and you can call me whatever you want to call me, the only 300 blackout I'd buy is a honey badger or something You'd like that. You'd also get a no or. Yeah, yeah, I might, um, but it's the same platform. It's that same PDW style stock that that would sell me on that design. Yeah, and Romans is asking this to me. Uh, boring. What do you want it to do, Big J? I'm, I wasn't meaning that disrespectful. That that five five six and two two three doesn't have its place. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying I I personally have been shooting it so long, you know, because it's been out so long um, that I just get kind of tired of it. I mean, I've shot, you know hogs with i've done all that stuff um and i'm not saying it's a bad round and i, I do like that you know matter of fact a lot of people think you have to get five five six but you really have more grain choices in two two three um you know so but it's just kind of like wanting to do something different you know not just shoot the same old stuff um so that's that's what i was meaning by that not that 
you know, it's a bad round or anything like that, but it's just my opinion. So, so back onto the 762 by 39 versus 300 blackout to me, you know, there is subsonic uh, 762 by 39. It's actually pretty well priced and reasonably affordable, but the AK platform isn't known for suppressing well. It's a very open action. Uh, like we shot my uh, Ruger PC9 charger, you know, a little short. That's a very open action. That gun does not suppress well. It's not that quiet. Uh, plenty reliable, though. And I am interested the AK, to see. I'm interested to see how the AKV suppresses, though. I think that's one thing we haven't better. tried. Yeah. Yeah, and you know when you're when you're talking about the 762 by 39, you know some of those can be pretty finicky. You know as far as feeding issues and uh, bolts. You know some of the bolts can break easier, um, and you know the ramps and things like that. And of course the mags, uh, you've got to have their mags or you know the more angled mags to get them to function properly. But um, and it is kind of the American version, uh, or excuse me, the 300 blackout is kind of the American version of the of the you know 762 by 39 but uh, I just think it's good to have different offerings you know and what's pretty exciting you know and I know you guys have heard about it Q coming out with the 8.6 yeah I think I think that's pretty freaking awesome I'm waiting to see what Noveski comes out with for the 8.6 and an AR-10 platform uh, I'm probably going to get a fix in 8.6 yeah too that's, uh, you know, basically it's what, a 338 Lapua bullet in a um, 308 case? Is that correct or am I wrong? It's a uh, 6.5 Creedmoor case. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, 6.5 Creedmoor case. Um, man, that and, and they're talking about having it supersonic up to 400 yards. I mean, or excuse me, uh, subsonic up to 400 yards with superior accuracy. And I'm like... Damn, that can be pretty awesome. Yeah, all right. Redmond is shooting. He's talking about the BRN 180 and 300 blackout. What do you guys think about that? Uh, what is it? I'm sorry? Uh, he's talking about the BRN 180, you know, the Brownells AR 180 clone. Uh, honestly, I haven't I haven't even checked on it. What What caliber is it? It is. They offer three hundred blackout and five five six. Oh, okay. It, I don't. I, I haven't done any checking on it to be honest with you. Okay, yeah, it's a pretty cool platform, but in a piston platform, I just think three hundred blackout makes more sense in a DI. It's going to be quieter in most cases. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, I'm on the same page with Harry. Uh, piston, I just feel like it's going to add weight. It's unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the BRN 180, for some reason to me, they made that handguard look way too modern and then put a completely old school charging handle on it. And that bothers the hell out of me. I'd rather see them make the whole gun modern or the whole gun retro. Yeah. The retro stuff has a really cool look to it. You know, I, I really do like that look. Sometimes with some rifles, you're like, eh, but some of it really does look cool. Yeah. Now, Scott... Is talking Scott P seventy nine is talking about the seven point six two by thirty nine ARs. My big thing there is I don't really want to run seven six two by thirty nine through an AR mag well. Just your magazine restriction really goes down. If I was looking for a cheap hog hunting rifle that I could suppress, that if I lived in Texas and I hunted hogs every weekend, I would probably actually build a seven six two by thirty nine AR. Yeah. But that not being the case, really not my thing. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say, you know, with reliability and stuff. Some of them can be finicky. Some of them can run really well. Um, but, I mean, they'll definitely do what they need to do. You know, 762 by 39 is no joke. So, hey, I don't think you're going to find a better round for the money right now, especially. Mike, you need it? Or? No, no. I'm, no, I'm no. Not. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Scott saying he put a thousand rounds through his PSA AR forty seven seven six two by thirty nine and have yet to sing, have a single failure. Yeah, I'm talking. I was Scott. I was talking about if you're building one, um, you know, if it's pre built for that, you're probably not going to have a problem. But I know a lot of people build them out of parts, and sometimes stuff's just not lining up correctly. 
Yeah, and that's kind of what I've heard. People have either seemed to have a lot of luck with theirs or they've had a lot of trouble getting them to run, even with factory-built guns. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it just depends on, you know, depends on who's built it and if your specs and everything's lining up, just like a lot of things can be. But, um, you know, as far as uh, this is another thing that I know that we're all, that's kind of going on right now just as of the other day. Um what are we thinking about, uh, and I know what you're going to say, but what are you thinking about all the looting that's starting to happen again, you know, in Philadelphia? Uh, it's going to have to be a problem that's stopped locally. Hmm. That's my take on it. The people have to say enough's enough and force the city, ca- you know, the city council and the politicians up that way to put a stop to it. And until that happens, unless citizens are willing to take actions in their own hand, which I don't know, I would suggest considering the politics of that area, it's not going to end well. If it wasn't an election year, it'd be handled totally different. Uh, I remember the riots during the Obama era and they were squashed much more rapidly than any of the most recent ones you've seen, if we weren't in an election, it'd be totally different. You would have never had Chaz or any of that up in Seattle. Or I'm not totally up to date with the Philadelphia stuff, but I, just another riot to me. Apparently, the stuff in Philly has been going on low key and hasn't even really gotten uh, national media attention for a while. Yeah, well, it really picked up steam, you know, because of the issue that happened with the guy that had the knife. Um, you know, and, and again, everyone, and I don't know if, who's all the guy that had the knife that was coming at the officers, um, don't know if you know this, but he's already actually scheduled to have a trial. Uh, and of course he might have some mental issues, but you know, for putting a gun to a young lady's head and all this other stuff. I mean, it, a lot of these people that do this are not, you know, perfect society members like, you know, oh, he was such a good boy and all this other stuff. You know, we've heard all that, but you know, what's going on there right now is it's just an opportunity to steal stuff. <laughs> and they were told to stand down. You know, the police were told to stand down by their leadership. Uh, but what's happened so far, 11 people have been shot. One was a 15-year-old girl. 30 businesses have been completely destroyed. And the government, or excuse me, the Philadelphia, uh, Philly gover- governor has uh, still calling it a peaceful protest. Um, you know, there were people backing up their cars and literally loading them up and their tires were, I mean, their tires were going flat because they were loading so much crap into the car. And I don't know if y'all saw the one kid that brought his own dolly and was stealing a washing machine, brand new washing machine off of the showroom floor. I mean, how does that, how is there any justice for that? How, how can you say looting and stealing and all this other stuff and burning businesses and tearing stuff up is, you know helping a situation it's not it's just an opportunity to steal stuff michael and i had this conversation a while back there was a shooting in my county and the officer unfortunately the guy who was involved was mentally ill uh he didn't have all his uh mental capacity let's say and he had, he was armed the officer shot him it was a clearly a good shoot but the officer didn't have a body cam but he literally shot him outside his car door of his patrol car so the dash cam caught the whole thing about as close to a, as a body cam would have as possible. And people were still screaming, this wouldn't have happened if they had body cams. It's yeah. just asinine. Yeah. I mean, it's the same, almost the exact same angle as what a body cam would have shown. And people will sit there and watch the video and they'll go, oh, no, he wasn't pointing the gun at the, the officer had an, an opportunity to shoot him once before he did. I think the officer was probably in shock not really going, holy crap, I'm actually in this situation. Yeah. yeah there hadn't been a shooting in uh, police involved shooting with the police department, at least in my area for like 30 years or something insane. So not, it, a, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter what the body cam say, because it's for, I remember when body cams came up and it was the biggest revolution that we had to have them. Now, 90 percent of i would say 90 but a lot of agencies have adopted them and now when it goes against the narrative that wants to be pushed they ignore the fact that what they actually see and 
like Harrison said, they they pick something that could have been, but we don't live in that kind of world. We don't live in a best case scenario world. It's just yeah. not and happen. unfortunately, you talk about this guy with the knife. Uh, and he said he might have had some mental issues. Unfortunately, this is the reality of these situations a lot of people aren't willing to look at. The police really don't deal with the general society as a whole. They deal with a couple of individuals multiple times, Mm -hmm. and they deal with the same people, and that's why that guy had a record. That's why this sort of thing happens. And Mm -hmm. I just hate to see people not looking at facts and just want to tear our country apart. Well, and I don't know if y'all know this, but supposedly that was the third time in the same day they were called out for this guy. Third time in one day. Yeah. So, I mean, that tells you, you know, and it, you know, uh, it's just like, come on, man. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. But um, you know, and that's the sad thing with the looting. You know, now they're just saying, do what y'all want to do, tear everything up, steal every single thing you can, and we'll just deal with the aftermath. But, you know, it's going to come to the point where a lot of these businesses have been robbed, you know, or, excuse me, looted, uh, which, which is robbed, uh, two and three different times. You know, their insurance company is not going to keep covering this, and their deductibles are going to go sky high. They're going to go out of business. They can't, you know, your, your smaller businesses can't afford that, and it's like they don't give a crap, you know, and when all of them go away, what are they going to do then? There, there's a, n- nobody going to be there to take care of them. Are, are you a lot familiar? of insurance companies that don't cover civil yeah. unrest. Yeah. Are, so. you, are you familiar with uh, Kevin Dixie shooting with the truth or shooting for the truth? I forgot what this organization name is. Mm-mm. He used to be based out of St. Louis, and he was talking about the incidents that happened in Ferguson. And allegedly, you can trace back. This is what he was saying. I haven't verified it. You can trace back essentially the groups that sponsored the protesters to real estate investment firms that yeah. came in and gentrified the area after the protest. Yeah. So same thing might be happening in Philly. I was going to say, they can get stuff pennies on the dollar and everything else. And I mean, you know, because we've already seen that once where they're renting U-Haul trucks and they have it loaded with signs and, you know, little shields and all this stuff and it's like okay hey now we're going to tear up stuff and they open up the u-haul and grab what they need hammers and all that and start tearing up you know it's like these are not just you know random things there's there's definitely some stuff behind it but you know yeah and indy polos you know soros and all the celebrities are bailing them out um and we're seeing a lot of that you know they're not Celebrities aren't throwing up money for the businesses that were damaged and to rebuild them. They're throwing up money to bail people out of jail that tore up the stuff. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, I've got a friend who's a uh, officer up in Indiana, and he said that in their relatively small town, it's a college town, they had some issues with the riots, and he said there were random pallets of bricks showing up yep. there everywhere, which my conspiracy theory is... Whoever installs storefront glass is actually the one dropping those pallets off. Because, yeah. I mean, that'd be a smart business move on their part. Not honest or ethical, but it'd be smart. Yeah. I mean, we had them delivered, you know, in Dallas and Fort Worth area and, you know, Houston and all this stuff. And they were delivered in non-construction areas. So something was weird, you know. And, and they that were like, like something you could trace pretty easily. Exactly. You know, they were taking pictures of them and they're like, why are these bricks here? Why are these bricks here? I mean, there were pictures going up everywhere in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And, um, you know, I was like, can't people, you know, whoever's delivering it, somebody has to pay for it. You know, I mean, it's I not, they're, up, they're not falling out of the sky. I grew up in the construction industry and everybody in that industry tends to be more conservative. So you don't think it'd be hard to uh, go yeah. and ask them to share their books without a warrant. Yeah. When it comes to that sort of thing. Exactly. The red menace sent us broken window fallacy for real so it's yeah. a literal broken window fallacy yeah that's pretty funny somebody yeah. an economics fan sorry yeah and there was you know there's there's a lot of uh you know people that were injured with those bricks you not just you know businesses and things like that you know people are getting smacked in the head with them and launching them and all that stuff so <clears throat> you know that stuff should have been shut down long ago and uh but had a couple more questions <clears throat> Uh, 
do you always carry, you know, this is a question I've been asked, do you always carry a backup mag with you? I pretty much never carry a backup mag with me. Okay. The only time I do is in a vehicle. Okay. Um, the only time I do, like if I'm just local, I usually don't. But when I'm on trips, I always do because <clears throat> I've gone into some sketchy areas. Um, hopefully, I would never need it, and I haven't yet. But I do, you know, if I'm going on a longer trip, so to say. Um, you know, there are some areas that I've been traveling forever, and I'm, I know where I'm going to be. And some of them aren't the best in the world, but, you know, hopefully you wouldn't ever have to have it. Yeah. That, and then... Uh... Keith Gregory asked about a backup gun. Yep. I do carry a backup gun on occasion, but on a normal everyday thing, I normally just carry a pocket knife that very unlikely I'd employ that as a weapon, but I guess I could in theory, and my gun, my main carry gun, either a Glock 19 or a Glock 48 usually. Uh, sometimes I'll carry a J frame as a backup if I'm going into something that I deem a higher threat. Like when the COVID thing first started, I would carry... A backup gun and a blade so fixed blade okay what about you michael i don't generally carry a backup gun um i'm an unapologetic glock fanboy so i don't i don't worry about my gun too much other than <laughs> obviously losing it or you know it being taken from me uh then i have a whole another set of problems but um no i generally don't carry a backup gun at all uh i have I would probably say maybe a couple of handfuls of times in my whole life. And the reason that I did is I was traveling with someone with me uh, that was perfectly fine to run one, but they didn't carry one on their own person. Uh, so if stuff got really bad and we were in a weird area or whatever, um, I could let him use it. So I carried a shield and a left hand uh, holster. Uh, on my side and it was really tight to the body you couldn't tell uh, but uh, never had to deploy it or any of that but like I said it's only been a couple of handful of times in my whole life so yeah I used to carry a Glock 42 pretty religiously in my boot as a backup but realistically that just kind of got old <laughs> yeah because it, and we've t you and I have talked about this before because I when I had boots made I had a little pocket put in them to where you could put one in there it was sewn in some of the boots and um, it's uh, it's like if you're ever in a situation where you can't get to your real one, but yet you're going to pull up your jeans and grab it out of your boot, that's going to take a little time. So I just kind of looked at that as over a period of time. I was like, yeah, that's not the that's not the one. That's not the way I want to go with one if I had to. And um, MD Polo I just asked a suggestion for EDC revolver for a Kimber S9. I'm pretty sure. Harrison just wrote an entire article on EDC revolvers. Yeah, I've got a pretty uh, long blog up on my website, MD Polo, but uh, it really depends on what you're looking for. Is lightweight your concern? Do you want a full 357 power? It really depends on what you want to do, because frankly, I would suggest anything from something like the Smith & Wesson uh, 43C, which is a 22 long rifle, all the way up to the Ruger SP. 101 just depending on what you're trying to accomplish with that gun uh you know if you're carrying it as a primary and weight's not an issue something like the kimber k6s or the ruger sp 101 or the smith and wesson 640 pro are all great options but if you and i wouldn't shoot the 640 pro in a 37 magnum i would just shoot that with 38 plus p's but if you're wanting something really light, something like the Smith & Wesson 340, and then I would only shoot standard pressure 38s. Uh, the three inch Ruger LCR is a great gun, although finding holsters for it is pretty much impossible. Uh, the LCR is hard to go wrong with, one of those in 327 Magnum. There's just so many options, but you have to figure out what your requirements for that gun are. Yeah. Um. We'll take this one more question, then we want to get into some other stuff real fast. Uh, Fina's asking, favorite multi-caliber suppressor? You want to get first, Big J? Yeah, let Big J go first. Well, I mean, you know, as far as pistol suppressors, and I've talked about this before, and I've talked about it with these gentlemen, 
I'm not big. I do like a 22 can. I think they're fun on pistols and rifles, 22 rifles, but I'm not real sold on the whole pistol caliber, uh, you know, to stick it on a pistol and have the extra weight and length on a pistol. Um, I think a comp, other than sound dampening, I think a comp is fine. Um, but I really like the 30 cal can, um, you know, personally, because you can run it on 556, 300 blackout, 308, you know, things like that. So I see myself getting more use out of that than I would a pistol version or like a, you know, 45, what is it, the 46, where you can run it on different Hybrid. things. Because I kind of think that, you know, when you, when you have one that's a jack of all trades, it's not going to be great at one or two things. It's going to be, you know, just like, okay, let's just stick a random thing on here and it's going to do okay. Now, I know if you want ultimate, you know, you can get, you know, a 556 five, dedicated, but I think the 30 cal can does quite a bit with what I want it to do. What's y'all's opinion? Uh, Michael? So, I have obviously several cans, um, an FFL, have an SOT, so I get to play with lots of fun things. Um, I personally don't see the benefit of, if you're, say you're suppressing 5.56, why would you not buy a 30 cal can? Because, yes, shooting a 5.56 can is going to be probably a little lighter, maybe a little smaller, probably have slightly less dBs, but you're not going to notice it enough to make it worthwhile. Um, not for the, not for what you get. Um, you'll have a lot more space if you get a 30 cal can. Um, as far as pistols go, I'm kind of with you. Um, they're fun. They're not practical. Um, I didn't have a pistol can until the other day. I now have a Microtech can, thanks to Harry. Um, so we, uh, th they're fun. They're no doubt they're fun. I do enjoy a 22 can, but shooting 22s is more for fun for me anyway. It's not a carry thing. Um, but no. as far as... Okay. Ever since he got a pistol can, I've been getting random pictures from him of just like picture of like his hand and the gun walking through his house like he's some sort of assassin. <laughs> so that's well, what a pistol can fun. is good for. All your movie fantasies. Yeah. Yeah, but that's about it. That's where it ends. Like you're you're not taking it with you anywhere. You're not doing anything. Um, I have enjoyed the putting the obviously the tri lug on the PCCs that I have and doing nine millimeter suppress. PCC stuff. That's been a lot of fun. Um, so, that's kind of... I think my light went out a little bit. Yeah, I think... I really think any of these multi-use cans, as far as it, something that goes from all the way to rim fire up to 4570, and we'll shoot center fire cartridges like 556, 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, etc., is all kind of BS. I own a uh, Silencer Co. Hybrid that I have for a 4570, and it's a really heavy can. There's no way you'd want to throw that thing on the end of a 9mm pistol. And frankly, it wouldn't even be fun on a 10.5-inch uh, 5.56. Five, and it's a lot louder than a purpose-built can. Honestly, I'd take a look at what you're going to do. If you're shooting 30 cal and under in rifles, I would buy one really good 30 cal can, buy a 22 can, and then if you want, buy a 9mm uh, pistol can and... Put a three lug on if you have a bunch of uh, sub gun style guns or mount it on a pistol. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with all of that. And you, know, you also have to look at when you're purchasing a can. I know we've all spoke about this before. When you're buying a can, you've got to look at the cost of all those damn adapters. They are not cheap. They're not like 20 bucks. I mean, there's some like of them. Are, bucks. Yeah. Some of them, I mean, the cheapest out there, you know, like the Q, uh, you know, Cherry Bombs, they're. You know, like 65 bucks, 70 bucks a piece. Uh, and then they go all the way up to $150. So it just depends on what you want to do. And when you start buying all the attachments and the accessories and the, you know, the pistons and all this other crap, man, it, it you're getting into a big chunk of change. The so. Silencer Co. Hybrid somewhere between like 700 and 1000 bucks, I think. And uh, that really, that doesn't come with any accessories. So I'd rather buy like a YMH 30 cal can and then buy a cheaper 22 can yeah. and you can find 22 cans if you search around for what 200 bucks michael 
probably. Y- yeah, um, it, yeah, because it's about four hundred or so uh, with this with the stamp. Um, yeah, you can find some pretty cheap twenty two cans. So you could be a under a thousand or two thousand dollars to get a solid thirty cal rifle can and a twenty two can with two stamps. Yeah, and see, even on the twenty two can, what I would recommend is go with a twenty two can that'll shoot twenty two twenty two magnum seventeen HMR, you know, five point seven. Because if you just get a twenty two can only, you know, then you're stuck with that. So going with a with a twenty two can that gives you options for the others, just in case you have a friend that has a five seven or whatever, you could throw it on that. And you know that the can can handle it, so it gives you a little more little more uh you know purpose and probably 80 to 90 percent of the 22 cans are rated for that yeah it, yeah i got i have one of the few cans that isn't which is a silencer or no uh, a q erector Erector. Would hate that if they heard me say that and i really wish i'd have gotten the el camino instead yeah, yeah. so yeah and i wanted the el camino also uh but they didn't have it and it was going to be a long wait so that's why i got the dead air mask and not that i hate the dead air mask i don't but I really did want the El Camino, but it was going to be forever. But 22 cans are freaking fun. I mean, they're, they are a lot of fun. And, you know, they can be a little picky sometimes. You know, they on some, on some pistols, they only want subs that I have found out. But, um, you know, some, they'll just shoot anything. So, but uh, One of my buddies in high school, his dad had a Ruger, one of the, the nicer Ruger 22s. Like, it was, a, I think it was a Mark 77 or... You know, it was like a seven eight hundred dollar base gun. Plus, it had you know, like a thousand dollar integral barrel setup, and that was the most fun gun I've ever shot. I, you know, ammo is just so cheap. I think that might have even been designed to bleed off the pressure to make supersonic ammo subsonic. Wow, it's so quiet. It was so yeah. nice. Yeah, it is fun. Um, I on my Ruger Mark IV. Um, I do have to run subsonic for it to run perfectly, um, but you know, on my other pistol, my other 22 pistol, it'll just run it fine. So it, it can be picky with some, but not others. So you just need to test it and see what works for yours. But uh, now we are getting close. Are probably going to go a little over. However, I did want to talk about you know really, and if y'all out in out in the uh, you know the chat if y'all don't know who harry is harry makes badass holsters um and um lynx makes badass pistol bags rifle bags i mean i've got five of his bags and i've got a ton of harry's holsters um big believer in them so if y'all are needing any of that please check them out but um you know how has 2020 been for y'all i mean has it been good i know we talked about business was up and things like that um any you know real quickly anything that has been bad or you know what have y'all ran into uh michael um our stuff went obviously through the roof um part of that being i think because we're a made in usa brand um that was a big deal we're probably one of the few out there i mean of course there's big people like duluth um but we don't we don't make bags like duluth does um there's a there's a handful, but a lot of them are making the more simple, just you know, folding rifle case, just sock style. I don't even know what you want to call them. I just call them you know, you can splice them open like a fish. Yeah, burrito. And, uh, yeah, burrito. And uh, I mean, they make those simple bags. There's quite a few out there making those. Um, as far as you know, made in the USA, like we make. Uh, I don't think there's any other out there that I know of. Um, So, I mean, we just kind of shot through the roof uh, overnight. We have been around since 2013. Um, So, obviously, it's not our first rodeo, first day, but um, it it just really took off. Um, Obviously, we're not the cheapest thing on the market. We don't even sell on Amazon because of the percentages that they take. Um, It, I mean, we, it's 2020 has sucked for a lot of people. Um, We've been very fortunate. but uh but with that you've had a lot of growing pains as well we've had a ton of growing pains um our back order situation has been absolutely ridiculous um we're finally getting caught up and i expect within the next probably week and a half we will be 100 percent caught up on our 
we will not have any more back orders. We stopped taking back orders. Um, if we don't have it in stock, you can't buy it anymore except for pistol bags because we're in production on those. Um, and after this chat, I'll probably go back to packaging pistol bags yeah. because they are coming off like crazy. So, and we're trying to get out as many as we can to our customers who keep ordering them. So, which is great. Yeah, 2020 for me, I've had a lot of issues, honestly, outside of COVID as far as uh, some supply line stuff that really delayed a lot of things. Like the line you guys saw launching uh, this August was supposed to launch back in March, if that gives you an idea. So that was something was interesting dealing with in 2020. Then when COVID hit, uh, sales initially actually just kind of flatlined. And then all of a sudden, they blew through the freaking roof. Uh, and then things finally started to calm down a little bit around August, which was frankly nice to have a little bit of a break. Uh, so that's kind of been 2020. I've got a lot of new products. I've actually hired some uh, different people to help me do some stuff and hopefully get you guys some new products out here soon so it's able to free up a lot more of my time to work on different parts of the business which has been really good yeah that's awesome i mean like i said i always try to support smaller business of course made in america business you know is what i try to try to always recommend i've been working with you two guys for quite a while and really enjoy your products and i'm just saying that because you know i have affiliate links with you but um because i was using your products way before the affiliate links um and i mean great products rifle bags you know, pistol bags, and I've got the small custom pistol bag, and then the large uh, contender, and that thing's a freaking beast. Um, I mean, you can put, or Concord, I'm sorry, you can put a ton of stuff in that thing. Um, I've pretty much got everything except the kitchen sink in it, and, um, you know, of course, with Harry's goodies, you know, his outside waistband holster, or, you know, competition holster, and you don't have to just use it for competition, but that thing's awesome. Um, and you know, his inside waistband stuff, I hell, I carry him every single day. So, and I have for how many years? <laughs> Three or four. I mean, it's been a long time. Three years, yeah. Yeah. I mean, dedicated with them. And, and of course, I rotate guns, but they're all Harry's holsters. Um, and really enjoy his product. So, you know, if you need any of that stuff, and with Harry, I do have a discount code. It's Big Johnson, you know, capital B, capital J, all smashed together. That'll save you 5%, or excuse me, 10%. And then with links, it's the same, Big Johnson, capital B, capital J, and it's 5% with links. Uh, you are sm supporting small business. You're supporting these gentlemen right here. And, um, you know, it's made in America. So it doesn't get any better than that. Um, but now what do you think about 2021? I mean, now, of course, once the election's done, all that good stuff, and we figure out who the hell, you know, how this is going to come out, hopefully in our favor. Yeah, but three-month process. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. I was going to say, we're going to all take our shoes off to help count. But, um, you know, what do you think going forward is going to be? Do you think you could run into supply issues again? Do you think, you know, it's just going to keep booming? What, what do you think for 2021? Supply chains are actually pretty uh, short up right now. Uh, there's one supplier that unfortunately is a bottleneck for me that I'm a little bit worried about. But I think 2021 will be good. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I could see, frankly, if Biden wins, I think sales are going to go up because of people on the right preparing for certain things. And just from a that's from a concealed carry standpoint, that's the type of gear I sell, not other things. So I want to be clear on that. And if Trump wins, I think we're going to see massive civil unrest. So. I think either way, sales are going to go up initially. The real question is, how is the second half of 2021 going to even out? Is that going to leave a lot of people not buying these sort of things and selling a lot of stuff off in the second half of the year? That's more my concern. Yeah. Q3, Q4 is going to be the telltale of 2021, um, no matter who wins. Um, I think no matter who wins, you're going to see a spike. Um directly after and leading up to January, no matter what, there's uncertainty. Trump hasn't been the most level when it comes to gun rights. Hate, hate it or love it, that's the truth. Um, not hating on him or anything like that. It's just that it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and like he said, the civil unrest that will probably occur will probably, I mean, 
that'll probably boost sales. Um, I I really didn't expect when the gun sales went up. I mean, I mean, I sell gun accessories, so I didn't really foresee us tracking with the gun sales as much. I think there were so many new gun owners. Um, that's why our sales tracked the way they did, um, which is great. Uh, I'm not complaining. I hope they continue to stay that way. Um, I think some of our products will begin to sell better than others. Um, I think if Biden wins, our discrete line of rifle cases will probably take the forefront and our more tactical line, like the one behind me with the Molly and the obvious gun case, that's going to take more of a back seat. Um, and I think people will try to stay slightly more underground because you're obviously dealing with the gun hostile administration. Yeah. I would agree with that. And I've carried your tactical bag or your discreet bag uh, into hotels and stuff. And people, you know, like I've had, you know, checking in and stuff. And people are like, oh, you have to carry your tools with you. And I'm like, yeah, you know, they don't. And they but, are, they're tools. That's all yeah. they are. Oh, I know. That's why I just say, yeah, you know, but, uh, you know, so you don't get the tactical, you know, look. That that's a, that's a very cool feature about that. So if anybody's looking for the discreet look, definitely have that. But uh, anything you know that you want to talk about, anything that we've forgotten, uh, you know, anything at all, y'all can think of. Uh, look for some cool stuff coming out from me on Black Friday. Hopefully, everything. So far as tracking, it hasn't been finalized yet, but hope to have it finalized in the next two weeks, which puts it just on track for making Black Friday. I wonder what it is. You got a little bit of an idea. Yeah. No, I'm excited for it, and I think everybody is going to be excited for it. So you definitely want to uh, definitely want to be looking forward to that. But uh, you know, I can't wait till I get mine to start testing it or testing them. So. Uh, I think uh, I think a lot of people will be pumped about that. And like I said, you know, the bags, I mean, they're awesome. And I, I've even put up pictures. I don't know if you follow. And if you don't follow all of us on Instagram, please do. Um, I put up, I had a bag, and I'll just say it was a Chinese bag. Uh, take a shit of what about, I guess it was a month ago. Um, literally don't even touch this bag. It just sits there. And I was unzipping it. You know, don't beat it up or anything because it's, you know, it is what it is. But it's not cheap, but it is what it is. And I was going to pull the little zipper and the zipper head actually snapped off. Now it's not American made. Uh, and I took a picture of it and I'm like, I didn't even pull this thing. And it literally just came apart in my hand, um, you know, but don't have that problem with links. So, uh, you know, and he's got, uh, you know, the lifetime warranty and all that good stuff. So. You know, he'll get you squared away. And, of course, Harry offers that stuff to a certain extent on his, too. So, but, um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for being on. Uh, and, of course, uh, if anyone has any questions for them, leave it in the chat. You know, after the chat, they can come back in and answer those, too, if it's something I can't answer. Or I'll get the information from them and get you all the information. So, I want you all to have all the information you can get. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely ready for 2020 to be over. I want this year done. I think we all do. Um, you know, I'm tired of dwelling on this crap. I want to move past it. And, you know, if we get sick and we get well and all that stuff, so be it. But I, I'm, I I'm, feel like we're going to need every moment in 2020 to prepare for 2021. So I yeah. want to slow down a little bit. Well, you know, I was going to say, we've got, we've got something really big coming up here very quickly. So I want that to try to be handled. And like, like we were saying before, it could take several days to count this stuff out. Um, but hopefully that's decided. Whatever unrest we have to deal with, we'll deal with. And, uh, you know, like I always say, everyone carry on because we don't know what the hell is going to happen. Uh, you might think you live in the safest city in the world, but remember, trash and shit comes to that area. So just be prepared, um, you know have a plan, you know, just get your stuff in order. Uh, just in case something like that happens, I want everyone to be prepared. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you gentlemen being on. Always a great time. Appreciate your great products. Um, and uh, y'all have any final thoughts y'all want to say or anything else? Thanks for having us, Big J. Oh, Thanks for having us. Yeah, y'all are always welcome. So, but we'll do this again soon. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Sorry we didn't get to a whole bunch of questions. But if you have questions, please leave them afterwards, and I'll, we'll try to get them squared away. But everyone have a great night. Be safe out there, and carry on, gentlemen. Thanks, everyone.